Our top story this hour, Hong Kong has started conducting mass coronavirus tests. It is a part of a voluntary week-long universal community testing program. It aims to control a third wave of infections that began in late June. However, the health scheme has triggered a political debate which has divided Hong Kong. The program is witnessing a limited response due to the involvement of mainland Chinese testing firms and doctors. There is a fear of data and DNA harvesting by China. Registration of COVID-19 tests began on Saturday. So far, more than 500,000 people have signed up. This is only 7% of the 7.5 million people. Health experts say that as many as 5 million people might need to be tested for the scheme to uncover the cases of hidden transmission. 141 community test centers across the city were fully booked on the first day. Authorities in Hong Kong say that the public health initiative has been made possible with China's help. However, the involvement of China has only led to skepticism among people of Hong Kong. Pro-democracy union health of healthcare workers, activists including Joshua Wong, have called for a boycott of the testing plan. Uh, we call on Hong Kongers to boycott the universal testing scheme, especially we have no trust on how Hong Kong government choose to invite the red capital companies to enhance the testing in Hong Kong, especially with the number of confirmed cases might not be accurate, or how of the company invited by a Hong Kong government to conduct and provide the testing service is already sanctioned by US government. They have also questioned the nature of the testing plan, saying it is not an efficient use of resources. Protesters call for focused testing. They argue that testing so many people might further spread the virus. Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam has slammed those opposed to the testing scheme. She says anti-government members will not spare any chance to create troubles, even when it comes to a public health issue. So far, Hong Kong has recorded more than 4,800 cases of coronavirus. 89 people have lost their lives. Now for more on this, we're being joined by Richard Kimber, joining us live from Hong Kong. Richard, thank you so much for joining us. Now my first question to you is, now that Hong Kong has started mass testing for coronavirus, the move has prompted some concern among pro-democracy groups in the Chinese territory. So tell us, what is this new scheme and why is there such distrust among pro-democracy activists? Well, the government says this new scheme is essential to try and control the spread of this third wave, which has been ongoing for almost two months now. Um, there is, though, as you say, an immense amount of distrust towards, frankly, most of the things that the government puts forward these days, and that's a large problem for Chief Executive Carrie Lam and her government with regards to this scheme. They're trying to depoliticize this public health program and say this has nothing more than a public health exercise. But there are concerns among pro-democracy camps, not just about the Chinese involvement, but also just about the basic efficacy of this program at all. They see that this is more of a PR exercise trying to inflate the, uh, the reputation of the Hong Kong government at a time when the Hong Kong government is obviously under a lot of pressure both domestically and internationally. And specifically because the actual number of daily cases here has consistently declined in the last couple of weeks. Yesterday there were nine new daily cases. There are people here saying there is really no need for this uh, mass public testing scheme right now. And also it can't really work if it's only voluntary and the rest of the city is otherwise acting somewhat as normal. There's no lockdown here. So there are critics both from the pro democracy camp from the political side and on the health side from medical experts saying that at the moment this scheme is really not what Hong Kong needs. All right. And also there is speculation that there are privacy concerns, especially after the national security law was imposed by China. And many have voiced fears of mass DNA harvesting and concerns that Hong Kong might introduce a mandatory health code system like those used in mainland. So could you tell us a little more about that? Well, yes, when this was first introduced and it was made clear that Chinese companies would be involved in uh, the testing process and also that many Chinese uh, health workers would come over to Hong Kong to help in this process, it immediately rang alarm bells for some of the pro-democracy camp here and some activists who are increasingly concerned about the level of Chinese involvement in Hong Kong. That then prompted concerns that, in fact, this might be part of a wider scheme to try and collect the DNA of as many Hong Kong people as possible. All of those claims, though, completely dismissed 
by the government here immediately, calling them as nothing more than scaremongering tactics, trying to smear the government at every opportunity. And they put in some uh, safeguards that they tried to reassure the public with, for example, making clear that on the sample bottles that are being taken today, uh, only the uh, serial number will be listed, no personal details of the actual individuals will be shared outside of Hong Kong, and that those sample bottles will also be destroyed within one month of the testing taking place. However, that doesn't necessarily remove all of the concerns that many people have here when there's such a level of frustration towards the government on so many levels. And that ultimately is what's undermining a lot of this whole exercise, not necessarily just the health uh, concerns and the health questions, but this basic lack of trust that still exists here on this, uh, on this very fractured uh, social discourse in Hong Kong. And so that's really what's been pulling down the government's effort to get this scheme off the ground. All right, and I know you mentioned this briefly earlier as well, but a third a wave of infection was reported in June, I believe. So how is the situation right now, and are there any additional measures being put in place? Well, certainly the number of daily cases has begun to come down. Yesterday, as I say, only nine cases. It's the first time in, in a few weeks there's been single-digit numbers and previously consistently reducing since the peaks around the time that this scheme was first announced. Um, so there are benefits, um, hopefully, to what's been happening in Hong Kong with regards to the social distancing measures. Um, what's been happening most recently, some of those measures being relaxed. It's now not absolutely necessary to wear a mask absolutely all of the time. You can take it off if you're exercising and you can take it off if you go to a public park. Also, schools are due to reopen in just a couple of weeks. Restaurants have been allowed to continue serving uh, dine-in customers until 9 p.m. So some level of relaxation to the rules here, but there are still very many rules in place. So what's going to happen is for as long as this testing continues, which will be at least one more week, and it may be extended for another week after that if there's enough public demand, all of the existing rules are expected to stay in place. Okay. After that, that's now the middle of September, it may be that many of the rules here may be relaxed and Hong Kong can indeed start to get back to some level of normalcy. All right. Richard, thank you so much for joining us with all those inputs. We will keep tracking this as and when we have more details. Thank you so much.